Hey floral peeps, it's John Hosick and I'm coming to you to do a little permanent botanical action today. i um, got a client that came in and brought this vessel to us. What a beautiful uh, style, very mid-century modern. And um, she came to the showroom and picked out a bunch of permanent botanicals in the showroom. We like that as opposed to fakes, you know, we don't like that so well. Um, or artificials, but permanent botanicals are kind of what we call them now. Um, very textural and she really wants something kind of fun and organic. Um, so I just thought I would do this with everybody and tie it together and just kind of show you what I'm doing. So ideally we have all sorts of wonderful um, product here. I mean, some of them are from K&K. &K. We've got some beautiful pods and just some, some great textures, a little bit of copper, K&K, &K, Allstate, um, and some Napco products. So. Um, ideally, we got a large vessel here, and I'm going to probably do a little inverse proportion. Um, what that kind of means is I'm going to have my container be my size, and my range will be by container, so it's going to be a short, squattier design. She wants it kind of organic. She wants it kind of loose and airy. Um, so ideally, what I'm going to kind of do here, um, we just have some great products. You're going to see, when I look at all these products, too, let me back up just a little bit. Um, I want to talk about color. Um, so color... Um, is key whenever I think we're working with permanents or fresh arrangements, but um, these color tones and color palettes we're looking at, we're doing analogous tones. Analogous tones tones are tones that are um, adjacent, 90 degrees adjacent on the color wheel. And when we look at these browns to chocolate browns to ambers to goldy yellows and oranges, we think of the color wheel and we think of that quartered adjacent, all these orange, orange, yellows and, and browns they just play very harmoniously together. Um, and tying in this little bit of ivory white, um, is, I think is a great way to bring the container into the design. So it makes all the elements wanna play really nicely together. Um, ideally, it would be beautiful putting all these container, excuse me, all the arrangements in the container and all the pieces. Um, but when I add this little bit of that ivory white, you can see how it makes that dance. It connects my container to my design. Um, so without any further ado, um, I'm just gonna start with um, piecing a couple elements in there. So um, this is just kinda, it's a fantasy foliage. It's kind of like a wispy branch. Um, and I got a couple tools here. You, you guys know that I love my tools. Um, I love this bunch cutter. Um, it really saves the old hands. And I also have my wire cutters. Um, but ideally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this bottom off here just to give me some sizing. And I'm gonna breathe some life. So a lot of the permanents when we work with them, they're so stiff and we just wanna breathe some life into them. And there's two kinds of, when we think about it, a hand tie, um, there's a lacing method, which everything kind of gets laced and tangled in your hand. Then there's a spiral. I'm gonna do the lacing method for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these elements just kind of dance across the top of this vessel to tangle for me. So I can put these in here pretty easily. And I have this one that has like a little bit of a copper feel to it. Um, I have this one that has like this nice green uh, tone also, which is, is wonderful. Um, I'm gonna make sure I take our little tags off so we don't have any mini, mini pearl action happening. Um, so I'm gonna cross connect these two um, pieces in the design. So again, I, I don't need this much stem. If I didn't really, um, if I wasn't worried about the stemmage, I could have left them a little bit longer or do it in my hand. Uh, but she brought the container in. What I'm gonna end up doing is doing a zip tie. I'm gonna hold it together mechanically. She loves when she comes in. Um, she likes changing them out for seasons. So this will be one of those things which is great. We're doing autumnal tones now, so it falls around the corner. Um, I'm gonna shorten this a little bit further. And I'm tangling that. So you can kind of see I'm lacing those kids in there so it's making this nice little tangle. And with artificial or with permanents, or with fresh, we kind of create that kind of illusion um, to create on a top of a container to make sure we have pieces that will hold and support. So what's happening is I put the other elements in here, um, they're gonna start getting tangled on each other. And I'm choosing ones that have lots of breaks or laterals, lots of pieces that'll make it uh, be a little tangly. Um, this is a great berry from Napco. Um, and again, these are all weathered berries and we use them outside and inside. And I just love these because um, you get the bicolors, you get the, the yellows, the burgundies, the wines. Um, this stem, I don't really actually need to shorten a little bit. So I'm gonna bring him into here. And you can see, so stiff and it just doesn't feel like it plays nicely. 
Um, so I'm going to breathe some life into it, working these back and forth. And again, um, when color plays in design, if I would put this all on one side, we could do a grouping of like items or grouping colors and do color blocking. This I'm not so much going to do that. She wants it to feel a little more on the organic style. And you can notice that they just separate that a little bit. It tangles a little bit on this top and allowing that to rest on the lip of this vessel, which is really pretty cool for this mid-century Marvin feel. Um, these were a great um, pod from K&K. &K. Um, just a, a fun, um, looks almost dried. We know everything is becoming all this organic feel to it. I mean, they're almost like a um, cotton seed pod, but they call them a fantasy pod. I don't actually think they have a name for them. Um, yeah, spray pod. So that's a very technical term. And so I'm gonna do, pop this, and this container actually has a couple of lips to it. So this one, I think I can leave him a little bit longer just so that he flows down. And again, I'm gonna bend some and breathe some life into it. So it just feels like it starts getting this gracefulness flowing out of the container itself. So I'm gonna add a couple more of these. So this is another pod. Um, this one also, I believe, is from k and and it's called a Haber. <laughs> so I'm not a really certain what it is, but you can see how cool it is. It actually has the centers to them, really makes it feel um, like it's a dried pot. And again, she doesn't want this to be too, too tall. And I mentioned before inverse proportions. So I'm going to keep this a really pretty size. I'm going to have a little bit of a negative space. So we talk about spacing, a little bit of negative space coming up to kind of give me this organic feel to it. Um, this stem is going to be a little bit long. I can see that now. So we're going to work that one into here. And again, I'm going to have these start gracing this container a little bit just to make it feel like it has a more organic, beautiful feel. Um, and I'm going to add one more here. And I'm going to do a little grouping on this one. So I'm going to make this feel like it's part on this side so these two grouped on this side so what i'm going to do is going to bring something that direction so again i'm going to bring one more of these same berry pods take this little tags off um, i'm going to shorten this one too because the stems are going to be just a little bit long so carry my color from one side over to the other side which gives you that balance and counterbalance counterbalance so threading that little kid through there and again see how stiff it is again i want to breathe some life in this little bad boy. And same thing with this little little pods. And they have like some little glue strings on them. I'm not worried about those. But it just starts creating this really fun, beautiful, organic element to it. And love these little these little guys too. They're called uh, spike leaf spray. Um, this one is in copper. And you can see just how beautiful it's like a black with a copper tone. And these bicolors that we're seeing in a lot of these permanent botanicals give them i think that organic feel and then make them look a little more realistic um, as the permanents go they're getting so good with so many of these again stems a little bit long and you can see i keep i mentioned lacing before i keep tangling each one of these stems so that it keeps creating this kind of a, a feed in the center of the container i mean just look how adding that chocolate these other colors were a little bit lighter colors, but adding that chocolate just anchors everything together. It gives it a little bit more of a filler um, for this design. And again, as I move it, you can kind of see it'd be nice to bring a little bit on this side. So again, I'm going to bring one more of these, going to shorten the stem on him one more time. And again, breathing life into them. And it doesn't have to be, I think that's what's so beautiful about working with permanent botanicals. Um, we try to make them not be perfect, and I think so often when I, when I see so much when people are working, they try to make it feel like it's just this perfect combination of flowers and, and nature. that It doesn't grow that way, so if we're trying to mimic nature with working with a permanent, why, not, why would we not uh, want to think about that? You know, the, the wind blows, a branch, this is a live thing, it, the wind blew it over, and it starts to regrow again. It goes up and phototropically goes towards the sun. The same thing with the permanents breathe that life into them, make them feel like they are part of those elements. And sometimes we overcompensate for it. And like on these berries here to make them feel like they're, they're softening this container um, really is a, a cool way to do that. Love this burr. Um, this is a new burr also from K&K. &K, and that's got a little hangy ding that's hard to break off. 
Um, again, this color is just so beautiful. You can see how that gives me a little bit more of a contrast. It starts picking up these umber tones here, some of the umber tones in these berries. And again, I don't need a whole lot of these. Um, ideally, again, adding those elements, I'm gonna kind of create a focal area. Um, we used to talk about focal points, but now it's kind of focal areas. And you can see this doesn't really have a focal area, but you can see where I'm grouping like items that's giving me a stronger impact to make it feel like I have an area that's featured. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. So when I start adding these guys into here, I mean, oh, is that not yummy? It just makes it so, so pretty adding those little um, burrs into that area, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, and I'd mention this little bad boy. You're gonna see what's gonna be fun here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deconstruct this branch just a little bit because I wanted to separate it. You see these wonderful laterals and I've worked with this a little bit more. I've been able to actually take a few of these long feeds out of it because they're all hand tied and I can actually add those in later just to make it feel like it has a little more of a separation. So again, I'm gonna shorten that stem a little bit. And I just want a couple of these to feel. I mean, look how wonderful this is gonna become when this goes into here. Ah, see? It just makes the container come to life. So before where everything kind of like set on top of the container, bringing those colorations in there, um, make it feel like it's all part of it. So a couple of these separated pieces, I'm just gonna thread those through. And it really gives me a little more flexibility to make it feel like it's um, a live design, so to speak, or a fresh design. Um, also, one other thing I wanted to do is I'm gonna add just a little bit um, of this brand. It's a fantasy spray and you'll see this. Um, I did it a little bit earlier today um, I wanted to have pick up some of these other tones and tone colors, and it came in this amber color. And I added a little bit of Just for Flowers um, Burgundy. It wasn't just flowers, it was Design Master Burgundy, excuse me. And a little bit of 24 karat gold or 14 karat gold. I like the 14 karat gold a little bit better. Um, it gives me a little more of a metallic spray. Make sure your cap is pointed towards a little black dot. Just gonna prime it just a smidge more. Like, Smells so good, doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight it. So just think of some of these little highlighted areas just to give me a little bit of that shimmer, a little of that shine. And I'm gonna hit the backside too, just to make sure I don't have, if, it, if I decide to manipulate the branch back and forth, it gives me just a little more um, ability to do that. I'm taking this little tag off of there. I'm gonna hit a couple of these down here towards the bottom also. And this one I'm also gonna dis, um, I'm going to take apart, I'm going to take the center out of this one here to give me two other spots. And I don't normally a lot of times need to do that, but I think this gives me just a little bit more ability for movement. And I'm going to use this technique as a collaring technique. So I have all these other elements that are like dancing across the top of here. And I'm going to follow these little kids um, in and under because I, I mean, I could put them up in the design. I think they're great. But I think you'll see once I do this as a collaring, I'm going to work that into there and just let it be nuances of that sparkle and that shimmer kind of working through the design itself. And the same thing, you can just see how subtle that little nuance is right there. And I want to bring a little bit over here. I want to break up this ivory white just a little bit to make it feel like it's a smidge softer. So I'm going to thread that little kid through there. And again, that becomes a little bit more of a feature, bringing a little bit of those highlights up into the design. And again, trying to make it feel organic and feel loose. You can see we've brought life into these little guys back and forth. I have one more little piece here, so I feel like I can add a little bit. This is a nice little short one. I'm gonna breathe, just bend them just a smidgey there and try to see if I have, and again, I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to feel like it's, it's an element of life that um, they're dried products, permanent botanicals, just making them uh, look really pretty cool. I really kind of like how this is feeling and I really believe that she'll, she'll like this kind of a design. Um, what I like to do after this point, um, those of you that know me know I love toys. Um, zip ties, we like this sound. So flat side of a zip tie, you wanna make sure this goes in. You want this, that zip, it makes it perfect. So what I like to do, I'm going to lift this back out. And you can see 
all those branches are all laced together. They're all just kind of tangled together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a zip tie across the base of here. You could use bind wire, you could use whatever you'd like to. I just like using zips because they make it fast and easy. You listen for that sound. A nice little zip. And I'm gonna cut that off. And I think I'm just gonna, cause it's a, there's a lot of tension in that hand tie. I'm gonna grab one more zip tie. And just give me a double. Probably should have used a little bit heavier one, but that's this way perfect, both of them together. Nice little bind right there. So I love to cover up mechanics. You can see where the zip ties are there. Um, I don't like people to be able to see that part. I'm gonna set this down for a second. Um, I save a lot of our permanents when we have them. This is actually just a foliage from um, a hydrangea bush. Um, but I like to cover mechanics up. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a little bit of copper, another one of my favorite fragrances. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of copper. I'm gonna do a couple leaves in case I need two of them. Maybe just a little bit of the gold too, just to tie them together. And I'm just gonna pull that leaf right off. I'm gonna pull that leaf right off. Um, I've got my little glue pan over here primed. So a little hot glue. And I just turned it off a little bit so it's a little bit starting to get nice, sticky and tacky. And I'm going to cover my mechanics of my zip ties up. So it's now been camouflaged so that you don't even see that. And what's nice about that is they're just like, I mean, I think it's a mechanics thing. We in the floor industry, I like to make sure everything is as beautiful. So I'm gonna put a little more uh, glue, and you get a smidgen more on this other side. You need two leaves to cover it. So I'm just gonna let them set in place just for a second. Mechanically, it looks great and beautiful. She'll never see how it's put together. Gonna drop this little bad boy back in there. And voila, we have a beautiful permanent botanical. Um, quick, easy. I mean, it probably took, if I was probably not trying to be a little chatty box like you guys know I like to be, um, it probably would have taken maybe 15 minutes. I probably did like a 20 minute thing, I don't know. Um, but ideally, Again, we can still keep manipulating and moving the products back and forth, but um, i just like to thank you for tuning in. Again, my name was John Hosick, um, and this is perma Permanent Botanical Fun and um, analogous tone colors, so analogous colors that are colors that are adjacent on the color wheel come on fall and very autumnal and fun. So thanks for tuning in.